Hey, welcome to the podcast, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate it here on Through a Trader's Eyes. Well, the uh, stock market obviously did not like uh, the Bernanke and what him and his crew had to say yesterday. Uh, of course, we saw a late-day sell-off really a after the announcement. It wasn't immediate, but we did see a sell-off, and uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. Today, it was uh, not only digesting Operation Twist, which we'll also get into, but it was about more problems in Europe. And on top of that, China having some weak economic news over the night. And I think the fourth thing that's not really been talked about a bunch today is now it looks like we're getting into these trade wars and we're starting to um, upset our, our neighbors, uh, China and uh, so forth. And that's not helping. That's not what's going to uh, really get this economy back on track. But as you can see from the screen, we were down 391 points. And you may be looking at that going, wow, I didn't know it was that bad. Well, it was actually much worse. The stock market was down 5, I think 520, 530 at one point, And within an hour, uh, jumped about 150 points and then uh, sold off a little bit into the close and finished at down 391. So if you tack on the 280-point loss yesterday, you know, you're looking at almost 700 points in, in less than 24 hours. 3.5% uh, today. The transports were down 3%. You know, utilities held up better than, than most, only down 1.8%. And they're actually up 5.5% for the year. Uh, the Dow is now down 7% for the year. Uh, mid caps are down 3%. Uh, small caps were down. I mean, you name it, it was down today. And uh, and it was pretty much across the board. Insurance stocks, you can see, were only down about 1%. Uh, but it was really, really nasty. The Russell 2000, down about 3%. Gold and silver index, down almost 8%. The oil service sector, down 6.5%. So really saw some real strong selling uh, across the board. Now, there's a few things. I you know, last podcast, I had discussed the fact that we had this this rally and it really didn't have any oomph behind it. If you looked at the internals, not only was it weak volume, as you can see down below, but it was uh, just there wasn't a lot of real strength when we looked at some of the, the, the number of stocks you know, going up, participating. We looked at the up versus down volume when we looked at the highs and lows and all those different things that go into the uh, blender, so to speak, of looking at what's called the internals. And so... I was a little leery of that uh, of that rally, so I actually shorted some using these small caps because I like using small caps because they're the most volatile typically. So I like using TWM. So I I shorted uh, a big chunk before the speech and then right after the speech. And when we when we got Operation Twist and we didn't get the helicopter bin throwing everything at this market, I put the rest of the short position on. Fortunately, because we we did have that sell off late in the day yesterday, so we caught most of that. And then, uh, of course, today. At this point, I'm still not net short. Still have, you know, it's hedging long positions. And there was very few places to hide today. But overall, having the cash, as we talked about in the last several podcasts, having the cash, not buying into the recent rally because it was it was weak internally, um, had a little short position we'd put on, and uh, and didn't didn't cover that short position. Perhaps maybe should have when it was down 500 points. We'll see tomorrow. But, again, because I have long positions that I'm hedging against, uh, I'm very careful to not take that off too early. You know, today was a 90-plus uh, percent downside volume, 90 percent downside plus uh, stocks also, and that happened yesterday as well. So we're seeing some things in the last two days that haven't happened since 2008. So – we need to be real careful of what's going on here and don't just think this is a garden variety sell-off and it's like, well, it happened in August and it kind of bounced back. Be careful. Now, it is encouraging. And by the way, before we get to this, I did want to show you, obviously, the, the uptrend that we were kind of in uh, did break today when it gapped down and it broke on heavier volume. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, there's a few things that I want to point out. First of all, of course, we broke through. We bounced off the 200-day moving average. We broke through it in early August. Stock market went down below it. Of course, then with the 50-day crossed the 200, the death cross, they call it. And then you can see we had trouble going back above the 50-day moving average here three days ago and, uh, and failed. Not only, you know, that was the day it was up 130, and then it actually reversed, and we finished up only 20 points on the day. So that was a, a little bit of a warning, too. 
So, and of course, you had little head and shoulders action going on. So there's a few different setups that didn't cause you to get super excited about this. I think one thing that started this, and this is important, is if you think back to when uh, the Swiss franc, remember they, when they when they pegged it to the euro because it was getting too strong and it was actually hurting their economy, the euro, the uh, Swiss franc sold off. Now, remember, the, the Swiss franc and gold were both the safe haven, right? The Swiss franc was going up, the dollar and the euro, and all those things were going down, and so the stock market was going was going down at that time. And and the only thing you only thing you could do was hide in the Swiss franc and gold. And then once they made that peg announcement, you know, it dropped a lot that day and it's continued to fall. So now for all those looking for a safe haven, they look at the Swiss franc and they say we can't do that because we don't like the euro. So if you don't like the euro, how do you like the Swiss franc? So that starts to fall. But guess what? It takes gold with it. So now gold, which was a hedge, when the stock market was going down, is no longer a hedge. And actually, what is a hedge is the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is actually the thing that's working right now. Uh, you can see the power shares dollar bull index is going up. Now, one reason I think I've told, this, told you this in the previous podcast, that I, I don't buy stuff like this typically is because you know, everybody's talking about how big the dollar move is, but we haven't had that really that big of a move in the UUP. It just doesn't move that much. Currencies, of course, generally... People trading currencies use a lot of leverage, uh, so they, you know, the, the currencies have to move a lot for you to make money if you're using some of the ETFs. So, uh, but what's happening now is the dollar going up is actually hurting the stock market. So now it's very difficult because you can't hide in gold, you can't hide in Swiss francs, can't hide in the stock market, and you can't hide in the in high yield in the bond market, right? So you're getting again selling now. You're seeing really intense selling in the last couple of days. We weren't seeing the indiscriminate selling a few days ago, uh, but today was was just the opposite. We saw selling across the board uh, pretty much in anything except for U.S. Treasury bonds. Now, let's explain very quickly. Operation Twist, you guys probably already know this, but it's selling short-term bonds and using the proceeds to buy long-term bonds. So what, you're, what they're trying to do is they're almost pancaking the yield curve and their whole goal in this is to get mortgage rates even lower. Now, the problem is is that, look, mortgage rates have been low for some time, right? If you, if you wanted to refinance, you probably already did it. So I don't think that's going to encourage even more borrowing because everybody that's done it has you know, already done it. I mean, look, if rates are at four and a quarter on 30-year mortgage or three and seven eighths, uh, it's not going to cause you to go, go refinance again. So I don't think that's the right move. Obviously, the stock market did not think that was the right move. So a lot of people were hoping for Helicopter Ben to live up to his name and just blitz the market with more QE3. And, and remember, I talked about the fact several weeks ago that I thought there would be some other plan that wouldn't be called QE3. This wasn't even really a version of QE3 because it's not it's, – it's, it's neutral, right? Balance sheet neutral. They're not adding – they're not expanding the balance sheet. They're actually taking the proceeds from the short-term bonds and buying long-term bonds. And I think – for those that like what the Bernanke is doing, they wanted him to just blitz the market with a full court press and just, you know, blow this thing out. And he didn't do that. And so the market's throwing a hissy fit and it's going down. Now the bulls are hanging on to the fact that, okay, we bounced off the lows from, you know, August 9th. So this is encouraging. We're going to bounce. And I think there is a good chance we will bounce. I really do. However, it's turning into a sell the rally market. And it hasn't been that way, in, you know, but it's, it's turning into that very quickly. So we need to see, again, and I always mention this, if we're going to get a bounce, we need to see just as much demand tomorrow and the next day as selling there was today. In other words, we need to see the same intensity and ferocious buying just as we saw people dumping stocks left and right yesterday afternoon and today. That's what we need to see to really get a bottom. So it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, obviously, the economic data continues to weaken, and we simply don't have the internals in the market supporting even prices where they are. Now, there are some very smart technicians saying 1076. We get to 1076 as early as next week, and then the stock market is going to rally 20% from that point. And, and maybe so. But even if we do, that doesn't necessarily mean the stock market has bottomed for good. Uh, but what's interesting is if you look at, um, and I've showed you this before, 1998, 
uh, compared to now. In the blue is 1998, and then we have the red is currently what's going on. And very similar back then, we had a really nasty sell-off. It bounced pretty hard, and then we came back down and tested the low, and then off to the races. So, you know, could this be the, 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 the low we make, and then we take off to the races? Maybe. I See, I think you have to be flexible enough. I, I, I am betting on the fact that I think this thing does go uh, lower eventually. But, again, I, I don't want to, um, you know, when we have two 90% down days, there's a chance that we're going to get a bounce. And remember, in bear markets, you have some of the biggest, sharpest rallies in bear markets. So take that in consideration because in a bear market, sometimes there are rallies that make you think that the bear market's over. And uh, but I bring this picture up of '98 just because it still it has the same length of time between the the double bottom. This could be a triple bottom, uh, so be on the lookout for that. But again, we have to see intense buying, and we're just we're not seeing it right now. Look, there's going to be a point that selling gets exhausted, and that could be months from now, it could be weeks from now, it could be days from now. The selling will get exhausted at some point. You may say, why on earth would the stock market go up? And it will go up because the selling's exhausted and there's nobody left to sell. And maybe that's sooner than we think. But right now, it sure doesn't look good. I think the reasons the stock markets are going down is justified. A, the market was relying on Big Ben to come out and do something. And uh, even if he had done QE3, that's not the right move at this point. But yet, we're still seeing the uh, stock market pout when we don't get QE3. And that's not to take QE3 off the table. That's probably going to happen at some point because, trust me, they care about a strong dollar and they care. They want, they want a weak dollar and they want a strong stock market. And they're getting neither of those right now. So, And we're coming into an election year. So uh, they're not done yet. And I think at some point if the market senses that they're coming out with another plan, we're going to have another rally. And uh, that's just the way it is. But all this printing of money and devaluing currencies around the world and Europe is you know going down the toilet not good for stock prices generally and I think that's what you're seeing right now so I do have some short-term indicators that are really close to switching uh, which would make me cover my short and just let the market breathe remember if you're going to use these shorts in these inverse ETFs and they have the, the daily rebalancing that goes on the longer you hold them the correlation breaks down so it's very important that if you're using those you hold them shorter amounts of time and you're not planning on keeping them and saying, well, I'm just going to keep them for six months and hedge myself. Even if you're right and the stock market goes down, you may not make money on those. So take profits when they're there and then also uh, you know, go in there and reestablish those at, at newer levels. Now, on the podcast the other day, I mentioned Netflix <clears throat> and um, got a lot of positive feedback on that particular uh, blog posting. But what you'll notice about Netflix now, and I did enter a position today for a short trade, is that it finally bounced off of a lower price. And I'm going to zoom in here just in the last few days. But what you notice is that it bounced off a low yesterday, and the low was uh, 125.02. So the stop that I put in was a little below 125, about 124.90 or so. So that gives us a reference point. You can see today... The same thing, the low was 125.25, so it made a little bit higher uh, higher low, and it actually finished on the day at 128.53. Not quite as high as it had been, but higher on the day. So you finally get a green bar <laughs> in the uh, volume uh, price here, or excuse me, the volume bar. So the thing is, now what we're looking for is we're looking for a bounce, right? That's all we're looking for. We've established our short, uh, excuse me, our, our position. We have our stop loss in there at a certain level. And we've got very limited downside risk, so about four or five bucks. And and if it bounces up, great. And I think, look, a bounce. Remember, this stock has fallen from two hundred dollars to one hundred and thirty dollars in about six trading days. So you know, a, a bounce even up to one fifty, one sixty would be would be just a bounce. And yet you could be a, have a really nice profitable trade, especially if the market. Is has a is it gets behind it. You did see an upgrade to Netflix today, and it was up pretty much all day, even though the stock market was as nasty as it was. That was very very encouraging. So, look for Netflix for a trade. And again, 
uh, if it if it breaks down to new lows, the trade's over with. That is a very specific trade, a very disciplined trade, and uh, one I think worth worth taking because of the fact that there's so many people that wanted that stock at 300 and now get their chance. And look, let's face it, there's people out there doing what I'm doing and doing what I'm suggesting, which is a quick trade, make a quick buck on Netflix. Uh, that's what they're trying to do. And uh, people people pile into it. Plus, when they scan the stocks tonight and look what was up on the day, there's not a whole bunch of green stocks. And when they find one, they'll say, hey, Netflix, that's a big one. They look at the chart and go, boy, this is a bargain now. So I'm not buying it longer term, as we talked about. I think the uh, it's got some it's got some problems ahead of it right now. That's why the stock price has, has done what it's done. But if we look for a bounce, we could get a really nice bounce up into the 150, 160 range. And from 130, uh, that would be a nice trade. So... Uh, let's let's continue to watch that, but keep that stop fairly tight on that one. If break the new lows, uh, trade over with. All right, folks, have a great day. Don't forget, a lot of you have signed up for Google+. Plus. Go check that out. It's plus.google.com. Search Carl Eggers. You can follow me on there. CarlEggers.com. Subscription up at the top right's free. And then uh, Twitter.com slash Carl Eggers for comments throughout the day. Breaking news, economic releases, all that kind of stuff I put on there. Also, EggersCapital.com for the money management website. Appreciate all the comments. Thank you for following me. As always, very much appreciated. Have a great evening, guys.